said categorically and unreservedly that this would be the last election with first past the post. And we also said we would put in a system within 18 months. So I think when you have fundamental change in your voting pattern and you have, a, I think, a, a, a different way of looking at things, I think that to have sober second thought is not a bad thing, especially when you are determining uh, the future electoral form of your country. We have said, like I said, we have said that this is the last election from first past the post, so that's undeniable. And we've also said that within 18 months, we'll have a system in place. I think that, you know, obviously we're not in government, so, you know, we have to temper our marks to some extent, uh, but I honestly believe that this system is gonna come about. Um, I know that it has been studied, and I'm sure that they will pick one of the systems or have a hybrid of two systems, or whatever they decide. But like I said, we are very, very clear, and I want to make sure everybody's clear in this room, that this is the last election that the Liberal Party will support, first past the post, and we will have a system in place within 18 months. Actually, I read how the STV voting system works, and as a science guy, I like it. But in terms of explaining it, I don't know how effective it would be to explain it. I know Estonia tried that system and it didn't work for them. So I think that a part of democracy and a part of a system of voting should be easy and simple to understand. And I think that's why first past the post was so sort of um, accepted or widely used, was it simple. You pick one candidate, the guy who gets the, or the woman who gets the most vote, wins. So I think that was part of the appeal of that system. Obviously, obviously now, when we look upon uh, other democracies around the world, they're realizing that it's not reflective of the will of the people. And I think that in our own sort of uh, growth in this country, I think that more and more people are becoming disengaged with politics. And that disengagement, I don't think, is very good for our country, nor neither our democracy. And, you know, we can talk about the different varied forms of, of proportional representation, but I think that all three of us can agree that we need a system. What the best system will be, I don't know. I have my own opinion. But I would hope that, you know, once a government is formed, that you would get people who are experts in this area. You would get citizen engagement. You would get people, you would get, you know, political engagement, but more importantly, I think that, you know, being a proud Canadian, any system that we have, it must be uniquely defined by Canadians for Canada. And the reason is because we have a lot of different regions in this country, a lot of re different regional disparities, and I think that all has to be taken into account. But like I said, as a science guy, I like the STV vote system, I think it's pretty interesting, but I don't know if it's easily explainable, and I think that maybe that's one of the drawbacks of the system. For me, uh, MMP represents a way where every vote counts. Right now in this country and in other democracies where you have first past the post, I'm sure you're all well aware that we have tremendous voter apathy. And in some cases we have certain specific parties, which I will not mention, that try to suppress the vote. And so I think this is one way MMP will make sure that every vote counts. You raised the question about how, uh, about what happened in Ontario in 2007. I think part of the issue was there was a lack of explanation as to what MMP is. So if there's one drawback to MMP that I think there is, is that it's not as easily understood as first past the post. However, I think that in the course of the study of this, or in the course of implementing this, I think it will be the responsibility of every parliamentarian at that time to make sure they engage citizens in the same way we're doing it tonight. People to people, person to person, town halls, whatever way we can get the message across. But they explain the system to the public through forums, through, through engagement, through town halls, whatever it takes. But I think that will be the responsibility of every parliamentarian, irrespective of political party. And I think that's the way you do it. And I think if you look at what happened in Ontario in 2007, the part of the problem was a lot of people didn't understand it, so they didn't vote for it. But I think that looking around the room today, and looking about, uh, looking around at how many articles and 
newspapers are, are writing about this issue, I think that slowly it's getting into the mainstream media and slowly the information will be disseminated and once government is formed and this process goes forward, I'm sure that there will be a greater amount of advocacy and a greater amount of engagement by, by parliament and by the political system. Our party has made it quite clear that we're going to study this issue and we are going to use experts, uh, community activation, community activists also. But if I can speak on my own personal behalf after looking at all the different systems, for me personally, I like Dion's P3 model because I think that model would greatly enrich uh, the diversity of MPs that would come from a district. Um, I like the issue of having somewhat of a constituency within a constituency because any sort of region has a lot of different uh, groups that need representation. So if we look at Waterloo region, for example, um, you have a lot of high-tech people here, you have academia here, you have healthcare here, um, you have insurance companies here, you have business here, you have social groups here. So I think that any one candidate to represent one riding and to be an expert in that is really disingenuous. But I think that if you had a system that Dion uh, proposes where you would have five MPs in a district, then you could get a good diversity of MPs who could represent a certain constituency to the best of their ability, and so the region itself would be better represented. Once, if we are honored to form government, then there will be an all-party, non-partisan approach where all parties would be involved with citizen engagement and with experts. We are going to move away from what you call a majoritarian view into a more proportional representative sort of view. I would support any system, irrespective of my own personal view, that reflected the collective will of the Canadian public. My own personal voice is one opinion. I think that when you have an all-party process, a non-partisan process, I think that if you take the partisanship out of it, I don't think there would be a big difficulty. There might be some minor semantics, but I don't think there's going to be that great of a difficulty when we know that we have the will of the people behind it. So for me personally, any system that is fair and effective and, and meets the certain criteria that we all have to make sure our vote counts, I would be supporting that system. Thank you.